I'm Ralph, and today I would like to talk about burnout charts. Actually, burnout charts are not part of Scrum, the framework of Scrum itself. They are a really good way, on the other hand, to visualize work remaining, the work you burn down. Now let's look today into a sprint burndown chart. So first of all, let's create what we often see a scrum board we use in the context of a sprint. We would have some product backlog items, which are coming out of our product backlog. These product backlog items often look something like that. They have a title, maybe a description and something else underneath there. Let's say we also have an estimate, let's say two in this case. This is how they often look like. Now in the sprint planning meeting, that's when the development team in the context of the sprint goal we want to achieve in that very sprint breaks it down into their plan in form of the sprint backlog. Some of the tasks are open or done. Now as a developer, I might choose to pick one of those tasks and move it, move it over into the doing column. And let's say I have a card like that. So then here would be the description of the item. Maybe here at the bottom, I would then put my initials. Everybody knows Ralph is working on that. Some teams I see they put like hours estimates here on the left hand side, which they then basically burn down until the task is being completed so that they can move it over. I personally don't like to use our estimates that much in the context of a sprint backlog. I'd rather aim for the sprint goal and create all the tasks and count the cards. Again, Scrum is a framework. How you visualize your burn down in your sprint backlog is essentially up to you. So in this case, this item is completed. We would bring the next one over there and over time that one gets completed as well. This one gets moved, next one gets moved over here and so on. And over time, nothing's start to move over here and work gets more completed. So let's say we have a sprint of two days, uh, 10 days, excuse me. So this is the beginning and we want to be at then 10 day down there. So after the first day of the sprint, we can then see, okay, how much work is remaining? So we would look at everything we have in these areas here. This is our work remaining here. So we would count everything up and draw a line. Let's say the first day we would be here. Second day, maybe still on track. So this diagonal, this line we have here, uh, that's the theoretical line. This would be the optimal line to move on. Would you ever move on that? No, if you're lucky, normally you always bounce it a little bit up or below. Now, if your sprint burn down, maybe some developers fall ill, and something else happened and suddenly you see something like that, you realize, oh, well, we are falling behind. That's really valuable, good information for the development team to look into in the daily scrum. So they would get together, uh, look at their burn down chart, look at the work remaining, look at the sprint goal and think about, hey, we are professionals. We want to achieve that sprint goal. What are the options we have at hand? What could we do to still reach our sprint goal? And they would think about that maybe come along here and make some changes to the sprint backlog, bring in some other items, remove some other items here, start to work on them uh, and so on. So they have this right to self-organize as we know. And as they move on, they would make progress and maybe they kind of get back on track more or less and then they could see how they are doing. So this is the sprint burn down, how we often refer to it. And that's good information for the development team to look into. Then there's the other thing which we often refer to as the release burn down. That's a subject for another video which I will be creating soon. Thank you and have a good day.